Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Binda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath Sham Kundradha Kunigidi Govitan Ki Jai Vrindavan Tam Ki Jai Navadip Tam Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamana Mai Ki Jai Tusi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees Go Primanande Hari Hari Bo. A moment of one more moment of setup and I'm right with you.
Okay, now we're good. Maybe. Welcome. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Ti Name Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvise Shushunyavadi Prashtachate Shatarane Vansha ko pitarubhyas cha kripa sindho pyevacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo nama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adyaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktarana Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Dhamma Hare Dhamma 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 Hare Hare so again, welcome. And I wonder what questions we have stocked up. Or bubbling up. Maharaj. Ma? Hi, right, Krishna. Um, before the questions start, I just wanted to say uh, I was uh, in contact with Suman Prabhu today, and we are working together. Um, I'm helping him with uh, getting together something for the uh, uh, 10 offenses. So hopefully ah. in a week or so, that's something to look forward to, hopefully. Um, just letting you know. Good. He's starting school this week, I think, so he's been a little busy. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. The well, I'll I'll start off by telling you something I've been whoops. Um hold it. Okay. I'm just pressing. Yeah, you have Hi, Krishna. Sorry, did you want to speak? Sorry to interrupt. My camera's not working right now. The only way it works is by restarting my computer. Can I hear you? Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're, we're hearing you fine. Um, All right, well, I can say something. Um, even though my camera's not working, you know, I'm always curious about your um Sheila Prabhupada's editor mm -hmm. like you know what was that like and like of course in the very early days you didn't have so much knowledge so like like you wouldn't really I notice like if there were some technical kind of discrepancies or you know what I mean little mistakes like were you only doing like grammar and spelling or did you also edit content you know what i mean like uh yeah yeah fair, fair question uh well let me tell you how, how i the um when i joined the turn of my camera at 26 second avenue you need to have to turn off the computer um if you mute yourself um yeah there we go come on let me Good. Um, when I joined the 26th Second Avenue, there were various services to do. And what I gravitated toward was um, assisting at, uh, with typing at the Back to Godhead office. The, at that time, the editor of BTG was a devotee named Rai Rama, who Prabhupada mentioned at one point as being one of the pillars of our society. Uh, he later left, but at that time he was there. And uh, he had an office on 14. He was staying and, and uh, that was the, the office also. And I began typing. That was my service. Uh, I don't know how much I learned in school, but one thing I learned to do was type because 
among other things, because my, my handwriting was so scrawly that I knew that I'd need to type uh, if I was going to go to school and, and so on. I'm, uh, so anyway, to make a long story short, I, I knew how to type. So I wound up as typist for uh, Rai Rama. So I was typing BTG articles and that sort of thing. And also typing, he had the whole manuscript of Bhagavad Gita as it is there at the time. And so I was uh, typing that. Uh, I retyped the whole manuscript of Bhagavad Gita as it is. And what else did I, Nectar of Devotion, when, when that be, came in, I was, I typed that. So typist, I was doing a lot of typing, which I was happy with because among other things, it put me right in the middle of the philosophy, which, which I liked the, um, while typing it, I was naturally, I'm reading it. So by reading it, I'm, I'm getting in on, on everything that's being, on the Prabhupada's, you know, his books. So that's going on. Uh, then later, I moved, the press was organized, is kind of press in Boston. And I continued there uh, typing. And there, um, Satsurup Maharaj was, had been the typist for Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada would send him cassettes, uh, these uh, dictaphone cassettes. Dictaphone is a, a trade name. It was actually a uh, Grundig recorder, Grundig. So Prabhupada would send him the, the, the tapes and he would transcribe them and also edit them. Uh, the system was he would do a first editing and then later Hayagriva Prabhu would do a, a second editing. So I'm typing. Uh, at some point, I was also typing Krishna book. I think that was a little later. But third canto, beginning of third canto. And while typing, I was seeing errors, simple errors. So should I fix this? Yes, fix that. Uh, whether it was a spelling error or something about capitalization or consistency. So I was fixing that. I was seeing uh, grammatical errors also. So should I fix this? Yes, fix that. So gradually I began editing in full, uh, you know, full out, full strength. St it started in that way. So then, uh, I gradually became an editor, and I would then I I I think I I uh, moved ahead of Satsrut Marj in that he was doing other things, so I began doing more typing and more editing. He gradually became he was the temple president. He gradually became a GBC man, and I was doing more. Uh, from the beginning. I was or pretty much the beginning. It was not only spelling, but it had to be grammar because it was obvious that there were grammatical errors. Uh, Krishna would tell the gopis, um, some demon would come to Vrindavan and Krishna would say, uh, don't be afraid of, don't be afraid of. So obvious is not necessary. So you, you lop it off. Uh, simple thing. But there were so many other things that were obviously errors. Uh, it would be the wrong word, or it would be uh, a gr grammatical construction. Like, um, we all know that Prabhupada, in English, for questions, you invert the word order. Um, so, I should be afraid becomes uh, why should I be afraid? Uh, not, but Prabhupada would always say typically, why I should be afraid. That is, he wouldn't invert, he wouldn't follow the convention of, of inverting the word order. And that's very typical in, in, in Indian English. Typically, you, you, you leave it alone. Uh, why I should do like that. 
instead of why should I, why I should. Uh, so we would invert the word order for him or so many other, uh, so many other things, making sure that a, a singular subject is followed by a singular verb, that he is used for men and she is used for women and so on. So from the very beginning, really, I was involved in um, editing not only the, the spelling and, and punctuation, but the, the grammar also, uh, and various aspects of, of, of the wording. And sometimes Prabhupada would say the th same things twice. Sometimes the, the end of the tape, a tape would end and he'd say something, a new tape would begin, he'd say the same thing. So you have to cure the redundancy. So from the very beginning, I was involved like that. And I didn't know very much. I, I, I'd never gone to college. I, I was not a, a stellar in, in, in English by any means. I didn't really know anything other than you would know by growing up in America and reading books. But I gradually, since I was in the service of editing, I began reading all sorts of books about writing and editing. There was a, a book by Sheridan Baker, uh, The Complete Stylist, a college text that I learned a lot from. And I picked up various other books, of course, the famous uh, Strunk and White, uh, The Elements of Style, and pretty much all sorts of books on, on editing, on word guides on word usage. There are books by Theodore Bernstein, the a former editor at the New York Times, and all sorts of books. And I would read them and read them and read them and read them and learn something about um, standards for, for English editing. And that's how I got going. To the point where nowadays, Pretty much any book I pick up, I'll see errors in it. I'll pick up a book by Oxford University Press and see you know, extensive errors sometimes. It's amazing, actually. The big universe are in the business of publishing lots and lots of books and uh, really not, not carefully editing them at all. So you see spelling errors, you see punctuation errors, you see grammatical errors, you see all sorts of errors that are just in a carefully edited book wouldn't be there. Um, yeah. So. Um, especially if it was printed in India, yes? <laughs> Excuse me? Especially if the book is coming from India, you know, written in India, um, there's usually a lot of errors. Oh, sorry about that echo. You don't you find- No, I'm talking- I, I, I know uh -huh. you're talking about very, um, yeah, like books from even universities and all, but but especially yeah. books from India. Um, often, mm -hmm. I I wonder, don't they have a proofreader or an editor or something? Yeah, of course. Especially sort of our Lloyd Bashar sort of books, self-published. Um, right. Books are very often not carefully edited, and yeah. from one point of view. We don't care, you know, there, there are books where we want to know what the book says and the grammar may be this way or that way, but, but we, we, we care about the, the message, the content. And so we, we're less concerned about the, the niceties of English. We, we, we go for it. Srinvanti Gayanti Granti Sadhava. It may be irregularly composed, but one who's uh, appreciative of the subject matter will hmm, hear it and, and speak about it and accept it. Um, Grinanti, uh, he'll accept it. So the, uh, so yes, that's there. Uh, we don't, uh, you, and you know, even Srimad Bhagavatam, the first, we have the first three volumes that public pro had published in India. And it, it's interesting, uh, our Jagadish Prabhu, one time 
pointed out in a lecture, he was the um, he was speaking about that verse, Srimad Bhagavatam, that even if a, a work is irregularly composed, it will be accepted by uh, heard, sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. And he said, this is practically a prediction of Srila Prabhupada's books. Because the when you read the first canto, it's completely irregularly composed. There are grammatical errors, there are uh, spelling errors, there's punctuation errors. Sometimes the type is upside down, literally upside down. So it's very much irregularly composed. Uh, but it's uh, these books were heard, sung, and accepted by those who were honest. So, and it's meant for creating a revolution, uh, Viplava, in the misdirected uh, civilization of the world. So, and Prabhupada's message was so urgent that he, did, he couldn't wait to make sure that it was carefully edited and carefully spelled and uh, the spelling was right, the grammar was right. He had a message to get out there and he followed the principle which he, he cited from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur that when there's an urgent, when there's an emergency, uh, say a fire in the house or something like that, the inhabitants uh, make themselves understood by the neighbors, even though they may not speak the same language. Somehow or other, you, you, know, you wave, you, you point, you, you do something to get across to people that there's a fire, there's a fire. And it's not the grammar or the, the, the poetry that, that you're looking for, but somehow or other to get the word out. So Prabhupada followed that principle. He, he couldn't wait to uh, make everything carefully refined. He urgently had a message that he wanted to give to the world. And so he, he did his best and published. Um, did everything himself, the, the typing, the editing, getting, getting it typeset, getting it printed getting it distributed, everything, one man show. And then when he came to the West, gradually uh, an English professor uh, joined him, Hayagriva Prabhu, and other devotees came to help him. And so he was able to establish a, a, a proper uh, standard for publishing his books, but uh, even then, he, he wasn't, he put speed over uh, niceties. If, a, if take Chaitanya Charitamrita, for example, a college professor or a, a, a scholar, a, a Western academic, would carefully go over the book and carefully go over it and send it around to all his colleagues and have it carefully vetted. And go over it, and go over it, and and uh, examine this question, and examine that question, and try to get everything exactly, exactly, exactly. And he might spend, you know, ten years or more on a on a work like Chaitanya Charitamrita. Huge undertaking. And Prabhupada did it in what a year or something. The whole Bhagavad Gita he did in in uh, less than a year, if I if I have my numbers uh, right, roughly that amount of time. And he he had in mind the production line. He, he he wrote us about it. One day one person edits a tape. The next day, one day it's typed. One day for typing. One day for editing. One day for a second editing one day for retyping, one day for typesetting, one day for layout, and in a week it's done. That was like the sort of schedule that Prabhupada had in mind, you know, like a, um, you know, a carefully thought out or a uh, carefully scheduled uh, work. 
Well, it doesn't work that way. An editor, as editors, we found ourselves unable to just edit a tape in a day. The amount of work that's that's required, the amount of concentration, what goes into into the work, winds up taking uh, quite a bit more than a day sometimes. Even the typing may not be done in a day. So we were quite slower than than Srila Prabhupada had in mind, and still we felt that we were rushing. Still we felt that we were rushing. <laughs> but Prabhupada, uh, it was almost Prabhupada's, he wanted accuracy, of course, but he really wanted speed. When I was the production manager for Bhagavad Gita as it is, he didn't write me anything about making sure that the content was uh, this or that. He wrote me about speed. Where is it? Where is it? The world is waiting. And if we can't give the, the, the world this book, it is our fault. Uh, when is it coming? You told me this and still it is uh, delayed. He was really pushing to get it out. Pope had really wanted, wanted it out. When you think about it, he had 10 years for his whole campaign from the you know, time of, that he came to the West to the time that he left this world. It was 10 years. And 10 years he had to give everything. So he, he gave the Krishna book, he gave the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam early on, not knowing whether he would live to see the 10th uh, canto itself come out. He gave Bhagavad Gita, the fundamental text. He gives nectar of devotion, the science of devotional service. He gives Chaitanya Charitamrita, the, the, ma the major work for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And of course, he gives Srimad Bhagavatam. So, uh, and a little of this and that in between. Ishopanishad, nectar of instruction. The teachings of Lord Chaitanya, of course, was practically the first book. So, so many important texts Srila Prabhupada is, uh, gives all within that short space. And really quite, quite something. Uh, so maybe that answers a little more than your, your question. Hmm. Yeah, um, I'm sure the others have, uh, are you all hearing an echo? I'm hearing it. No, you're fine. All right. Well, um, as far as uh, content, like um, in Canto 1, Chapter 13, text number 4, well, it's actually 3 and 4, in reference to when Vidura returned to the palace and all mm -hmm. the inhabitants, they went to greet him and to hear from him. And it gives a short biography of many of the people who were present. So as far as um, it speaks about um, Prita or, or Kunti Devi, but then um, one thing it says is how Kunti, you know, she, did, she was reluctant, but her husband encouraged her that she can call for the demigods to beget sons. And then it said the other two sons namely Nakula and Sahadev were begotten by Pandu himself in the womb of Madri. So we understand from Mahaparat that um, that wasn't so, that she had called the Asha Kumaras. Mm -hmm. So something like that, would you, um, back then, like I said, you probably didn't know a whole lot. But if you saw something like that, would you bring that to Srila Prabhupada's attention? And, and uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Practically, um, hardly ever did we do that, did we bring things to Prabhupada's attention? Uh, very rarely. Um, there were such things, of course. There were questions that should it be this, should it be that? Most of the time, we tried to figure these things out on our own, um, especially when there were questions that, that you couldn't figure out just from the English. We would consult the Sanskrit editors, Pradumna at first, and then he 
gradually had assistance because they could go into the text and say it was this, it was that. Um, and writing to Srila Prabhupada was difficult. Prabhupada was traveling all over the world and to write to him was, um, was difficult. It, it, to send a letter to India would take like a week at least. To get a letter back from India would take another week. And that's assuming that you, you hit the right target. That if you wrote to Bombay, Prabhupada would actually be in Bombay. Mm. So uh, we tended not to write to Prabhupada just because of the, mm. the time involved. And, and you know, we're trying to go fast. And meanwhile, you, you, you write a question and it holds things up. Also, the uh, getting across what the issue was in writing. If you wrote to Prabhupada and, and then you got an answer back that reflected that you hadn't communicated the question clearly enough, then, you, then you'd be stuck. You know, you'd, you'd have waited two weeks to get an answer that, wasn't, that didn't quite answer your question. You couldn't go back and forth the way you might with, with an author who is, you know, in the same, in the same place, in the same uh, town at least, or even the same country. So we tended not to write to Srila Prabhupada. Every now and then we did. Um, and the artists were more free about writing to Prabhupada. It might have been our attitude also. We tended not to want to pester Prabhupada. The artists did send a lot of questions to Prabhupada. Uh, should this person have a beard? Should this person, uh, how should this person look? Um, but the English editors, we tended to do that less. One time I did send a letter to Prabhupada. Um, or actually lots of times what I would do would, would be piggyback something. Someone be, would be writing a letter to Prabhupada and I would piggyback a question. You know, Jadarani would write or, or Satsumaraj would write and I would have a question to add there. Um, but anyway, one time I wrote a letter to Prabhupada, I think it was me. Um, and there was some... In Krishna book, there was something that was unclear. It was in the last chapter of Krishna book. There was a, a question, there was a, a passage that was unclear. And Prabhupada gave a one word, word answer. Yaduvara Parishad. Yaduvara Parishad. Uh, the Prabhupada had been, the verse he was summarizing was, uh, Jayati Janivaso, Devi Janmavado, Yaduvadi Parishad, Swadur Biras Yanda Dharma. So Prabhupada wrote a one word answer, Yaduvadi Parishad. The, the purport of that was uh, here's, here's the text that I'm glossing, that I'm commenting on. Fix it accordingly. Especially you've got your Sanskrit. So here's what I'm trying to convey, the purport of Yaduvara Parishat. So you put it into good English. That was the answer that he gave. He didn't, he didn't say all that, he just wrote Yaduvara Parishat. And then he, he wrote also many in that same letter, many thanks for your um, something like hard work, Krishna will bless you. Continue your prescribed duty and train others that instruction Prabhupada gave. Continue your prescribed duty and train others. I think he gave that instruction to many devotees, continue your prescribed duty and train others. But uh, yeah, so we tended not to write to Srila Prabhupada, we would just fix things. Or sometimes not. That area you're speaking about, uh, the Ashwini Kumar question, uh, Ashwini Kumar, as against Pandu himself, ha has been known about for decades. Uh, but Prabhupada says it in more places than one. It's begotten by Pandu himself. And we've just left it. Uh, because although we, we know that it's supposed to be the Ashwini Kumars, according to Mahabharata, uh, we just respected that that's what Prabhupada said. And so we, we left it. It wasn't a, a transcription error. It wasn't something like that. Prabhupada had said it. 
And so we left it. There's a similar sec section about Bhishma Dev being present at the Rajasuya Yagya, which of course took place, um, if I have it right, I think this is, was the issue, uh, took place after the Battle of Kurukshetra, when of course Bhishma Dev had already expired. But the Prabhupada said it, and we've just left it. It's, it's a known discrepancy, uh, or you can say a known error. Uh, but we've left it. That's called Arsha Prayog. That, well, that's what the Rishi said. But sometimes you'll see something in, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam. The meter is, is not quite right, or the, the grammar is questionable, or there's something some issue there. And the commentators will just write, they'll just note it and they'll say Arsha, which means, well, that's what the Rishi said. That's what the Rishi said. And yeah, we, we see that it, it, it's technically an error, but we just leave it because, well, that's what the Rishi said. So lots of times, or not, yeah, sometimes, We've just left things because it's clear that it wasn't a type of error or a, anything of that nature. It's what Srila Prabhupada said. So we've left it, especially, yeah, sometimes we've done that. And other times we just fixed it. Yaruvari Parishat, that's what Prabhupada is trying to say. And we, we fix it uh, probably more often than not, particularly when it's not something. Uh, yeah, we, we just fixed it during Prabhupada's time so many different things. I mean, and that was the work of the editor. The editor is there to catch errors in grammar, editor at errors in spelling, but also things that are redundant uh, and things that are just obvious errors. Sometimes the person will, will type uh, uh, after the, the battle. And it's clear that he doesn't mean the, the, he just means the once. So you fix it, you, 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 you knock it out. Or sometimes, uh, well, there'd be so many things. And lots of times, especially the, the later you go in the books, the more you see Pradumna, uh, just fixing things, things that wouldn't have been clear, things that were technically, Prabhupada had said A, but it should have been B. And Pradumna would just fix them. He was traveling with Prabhupada. He was entrusted with the work and he would just uh, fix them and, and we'd get a manuscript with Pradumna's uh, fixes included. And Prabhupada in, entrusted him with that work. So it was really, you know, it's easy to think that Prabhupada just sort of wrote, Krishna dictated and Prabhupada wrote, and you just fix the spelling and the grammar and you're done. It was just as easy as that. Well, it never was. It never was. There were always questions of it's so many uh, issues that um, came within the duty of an editor to to refine, to fix, to revise. At the same time, keeping in mind that it's not the editor's book, it's the author's book. So you, you're not at, at liberty to just change willy nilly. You're trying to keep well, the author's voice, the author's message. You're trying to be faithful and true to the author at the same time that you're making these kinds of necessary revisions. So um, all that goes into, into editing. Is that okay, Kamalini? I don't want to take, want to take from other people, from other people that want to ask. Want to ask. Yeah. Remember, you take whatever yeah, comes, you've got the floor. All right, when I right. went from, from I saw the beginning, saw the beginning the date. date. Do you hear an echo? Hear echo? Uh, no, you're okay. okay. In the beginning of the debate, like the reading review, he was like, like, you know, I'm in practice because some of the scholars who he, uh, it, you know, rubbing shoulders with, they point out to him, you know, this is a mistake here and there. 
and I feel embarrassed. But then later, then somehow he switched to the other side on the um, against the editing camp. So um, yeah, I just found that kind of interesting. Um, like you said, it's not changing, although um, there is a huge, a huge um, contingent who are who are have criticized you for changing, right? Um, saying that you did change Prabhupada's words and all of that. So, um, so but here we're, we're hearing that there's so much that you saw obviously was um, not not you knew from other scriptures like the Mahabharat, but you um you know or, or from other places in the Prabhupada's books. But, but you still left it because he said it. So I know you must be very tired of this um, debate, I'm sure. <laughs> but it's kind of, um, you know, because I felt well, and go ahead. people ask me, well, do you have the unedited? I only want the unedited versions and like that, you know? Yeah. Um, well, of course, as you know, there's no unedited books except for the first canto published in India. All the others were were edited extensively. Of course what you're what the people you're talking to mean is not edited again after Prabhupada's departure. Um, fair enough. One can take that position. Um, I'm not really involved in this anymore. The last time that I edited uh, actually I only revised, I think, two works after Srila Prabhupada's departure. One was Bhagavad Gita as it is, published in 1983. And the other was Nectar of Devotion, published, uh, well, I could look it up, but sometime probably not too distant from then, although I don't remember in which direction when he first or Bhagavad Gita first. Um, those were really the two books that I was involved in in revising. So that was like Bhagavad Gita was what um, about 40 years ago, 45 years ago that I revised Bhagavad Gita. And I haven't been really involved in, in revising in any other books. Um, I, I've commented on the revisions of others and you know I think it should be this, I should think it should be that. So I've been involved in that way but I, I haven't undertaken the revision of any other book. And now I'm not involved at all for the last uh, year or more. I haven't been involved with BBT ed editorial affairs. So really where, where the things go now is, is up to the trustees. What books they want to publish, to, ex edited to what extent is entirely up to them if they want to do a a third or a fourth edition of Bhagavad Gita as it is, that's fine. If they want to distribute this version or that version, that's fine. If whatever they want to do is it's not my responsibility, it's really theirs. So um, in that sense, it, it's a debate that doesn't affect me. I'm not, not involved. I don't have a, a dog in the race. Yes, Tulsi Priya. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I was just thinking, this is kind of related to my comment I cut about related to the urgency, but hearing what you're saying, I was thinking some devotee with a business background who could write, could write a very nice hybrid bridge book talking about how the Christian consciousness movement went from nothing to a worldwide organization in a very short period of time. Um, and and uh, talking about you know, the process of the editing and everything, I'm just thinking how Prabhupada had so much faith in Krishna that he delegated the, the, the duties to you and to us who were immature in age, immature in devotional service, at least in this life, and, and that you all had faith in his instruction and you didn't, you weren't like, you know, all consumed with self doubt and, 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 and mentalness and everything you did what you did and, and, 
trusted that Krishna would make things right. And so I just feel like it's it's remarkable. The whole thing was running on on faith and, and Prabhupada faith in Krishna. And if he hadn't done that, what would have happened? You know, it, it, it was not possible for him to do every little thing on yeah. his own. The uh, and, first had our shared mental yeah. this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut yeah. You off too. yeah. Oh, it's just it's just really remarkable because still there's work going on today. You know, to make things you know proper for future generations, and you know the whole BBT is is this massive organization within our, an organization. And I'm I guess I'm just wondering. You know, it it seems like there there's a principle there that anybody could use even outside of Krishna consciousness. You know, to 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 get things done. But especially within Krishna consciousness, for future devotees who have projects and missions within the within within the movement to get things going, and and I was thinking that's also related to um, Ravindra Prabhu speaks about the four regulative principles being principles of cognition, and so um, maybe not everybody was you know so adherent uh, when Prabhupada was present, but they were running on his his potency and his faith. But it seems that when I get into arguments with people about the editing issue, I always say I look at I look at Maharaj's life, and I see how he's living. He's living. He's following the principles. He's living as a sannyasi. He's not, you know. And that that instills trust in me. And I'm not saying this to be a flatterer. I'm just saying it's 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 a principle there. And if you can't trust somebody who is doing, you know, following the process as Prabhupada gave it then you can't trust somebody just because they have a sentiment that things should be one way or the other. You have to look at the person who's doing it. And I don't know if that's the right way to think or the wrong way to think, but it seems to me to be a worthwhile principle that people, when they're trying to get, uh, get something accomplished in Krishna consciousness, the faith that if they're following Prabhupada and they're following the process, that they should just proceed and do what needs to be done and have faith that things will turn out right as long as they're adhering to the process properly and doing the best that they can. Of course, skill enters into it and, and you know, native intelligence and all of that. But that that faith in following, it seems to be to be to me to be essential to getting something accomplished. Would you have anything to expand on or, or say about that? Yeah, you've, you've touched on quite a number of topics. Uh, first, it, it's remarkable that the way Prabhupada engaged people. Um, you know, like Lord Ram conquering Lanka with, with a band of mon monkey soldiers, uh, monkeys and bears and what have you. Uh, Srila Prabhupada engaged whoever Krishna sent him. So he, uh, or the example is Bombay, where he, he wanted a temple built. So he, he uh, this devotee Surabhi had some abilities in, in drawing or, or and Prabhupada asked him to design a temple and made him quite a, a, a uh, an architect of a major uh, landmark building in Bombay and, and a landmark building in Vrindavan and a landmark building in, in Mayapur uh, and, and more. And he became quite a, 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 a creditable and even influential uh, uh, architect from a person who had no background, you know, in, in architecture. And similarly, Prabhupada took all sorts of people who had no real background in what they were doing and made them into something uh, by his, his training or by his, his desire uh, with help from Krishna. Uh, he, uh, you do this. And somehow or other, sometimes it would get done, sometimes it wouldn't get done, sometimes it would fizzle, you know, the person wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do it. And sometimes he would. Uh, but Prabhupada would sort of go at it and engage whoever, whoever Krishna sent. Uh, you, I think of the printing press where, um, you know, if you were a businessman and you wanted to set up a press, you'd probably uh, buy an existing uh, business or you'd you'd go out and hire uh, people with a, a background. Prabhupada just engaged some some disciples knew that Prabhupada wanted to print books. They went and, and got involved in the printing industry. Then they set up something 
when we first published Nectar Devotion, which was the pretty much the first one of the first items, first books to, to come off our press, we sent copies to Prabhupada and, and the binding fell apart. The, the book, the pages fell out in Prabhupada's hands. So <laughs> this was, uh, you know, there were shortcomings <laughs> and, and, and more, more be so where that, where those came from. But gradually the, the devotees became more accomplished and, and expert in, in, in doing what they were doing, whether it was editing or, or proof typing or proofreading or printing or uh, distributing books. Uh, from the beginning, no one knew how to distribute a book. And that, that then the Prabhupada said somehow, I want these books distributed. And we, you know, BBT became a, a, a you know, huge distributor of, of books. Uh, devotees just by their determination and by Krishna's uh, mercy learned how to do it. And so many other things that devotees, you know, starting temples, he'd drop somebody off somewhere and say, start a temple. He'd order some new disciples, start a temple. And you know, the person had never started anything in, in his life and Prabhupada saying, start a temple. And they would have to, and you know, that means you have to do the accounting, you have to do the, the uh, yeah, everything. Everything that's involved in running a, a business as it were and managing people, human resources, somehow or other. And yes, Prabhupada would have faith in people or, or not, but, <laughs> but this is, you're the best we've got, so go out there and, and, and do it. And he would he would entrust the work to someone, he, and they, they might succeed or not succeed. But if they sincerely made the attempt, something would happen. Uh, more often than not, or not, and Krishna Prabhupada would try again some other way. Uh, he would try try again some other way. Uh, but you know, he he sent uh, those householder couples to London, and it had a huge impact where trained Gaudiya Vaishnav uh, sannyasis had not been able to accomplish anything. Prabhupada's monkey army or, you know, his, his uh, new disciples were able to accomplish extraordinary things. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, and on what? On their faith in Prabhupada, in their dedication to Prabhupada, their enthusiasm, their conviction that this was, that Krishna consciousness was was true, was right, was, was uh, the thing to do. So we can learn from that. Uh, we can learn from that. There's a question from Sankarshan. Of all complaints you've heard about the editing, are there any that have made an impression on you that seem worth considering? Um, yes, there are certainly issues worth considering. The main one, I would say, is devotees who have a concern that in the future, editing could go on and on and on with people who mm, had never met Prabhupada, who might have, you know, only a third hand or fourth hand or tenth hand uh, understanding of what Prabhupada had said, and that the works of Srila Prabhupada could get bent out of shape, that papal people could mm, edit things irresponsibly or with less understanding or less restraint and the things could go out of hand. I think that's a, a, a legitimate concern. Uh, it's not stupid. It's not uh, undeserving, unworthy. It's a very legitimate concern that many devotees have, have expressed. And, and BBT trustees have in mind also that sometimes it's expressed, where does it end? You know, how, to what extent can you go? And 
would it be what Prabhupada wanted? At some, or at some point, are you just going beyond what you're legitimately meant to do? So I think that's a, a, a sober and intelligent concern. I think that's a sober and intelligent concern. The, and many are, are sober and intelligent, you know, are you, um, yeah, I think that's the main one that comes, comes to my mind. And of course, there's two responses to that. One is you can say, well, we seal the books and from now on, you know, from this date on or from the date when the last editors who had personal contact with Srila Prabhupada leave the world or, or can no longer do it, we seal the books and no one else can touch them. That's one way to respond to it. Um, the, there are other ways to respond. You can establish an editorial board, which it seems the BBT has, has now done, uh, or there are various other ways to, to approach it. Um, if you seal them, the problem is then you, then you find errors that really need fixing. And then you say, yeah, but we just sealed them, so we can't fix them. I, uh, and we've had that discussion at the BBT many times. We say, well, you know, shouldn't we seal them? And then again, we keep turning up things that were wrongly, wrongly done. Um, I remember, maybe it was like within the last two years, I gave a class on third canto and it said, my dear King Vidura, and went on from there. And I thought, wait a second, Vidura wasn't a king. And I looked back at the manuscript, which I had a copy of, and sure enough, it was my dear king, Vidura, and went on talking about Vidura. Uh, but the devotees who edited it, which probably would have been me at the time, didn't know whether Vidura was a king or not. And so my dear king Vidura, after such and such, and um, so it's clearly wrong. Uh, it's clearly an error, and it, it wasn't Prabhupada's error, it was uh, probably my error. And should we have said, well, I'm sorry, the books were sealed uh, three years ago, and you can't go back and fix that, and so we have to have King Vidura forever? Um, or do we allow a, a revision? And, and then what revisions do you allow? Is, are there restrictions on what can be revised and what can't be revised. So these are all things that the BBT will have to deal with. As I mentioned, I'm not involved in that anymore, but these are the sort of questions that the trustees will have to uh, decide upon. Let's just see. For some reason, my type is very small in the chat box today. Oh, yeah. Some things, this is... Uh, What I can interested am I interested in writing an autobiography? I feel your personal story is very valuable. No, I wouldn't be very interested in writing an autobiography. Um, give a short answer. Um, considering that people won't even be speaking contemporary languages in a hundred to two hundred years from now, the issue is um, never going to be resolved once and for all, how many people are still reading the King James Bible and understanding it? Yeah, there's that question when English is no longer uh, what like Chaucerian English, 
you sort of need a, a special education to understand, even though he Shostak was writing in just sort of normal English for the time. So yes, we will have that problem. Words change and means different mean different things. In uh, my lifetime, I've seen gay go from meaning happy to meaning something very different. Uh, just to give one small example. Uh, Maharaj Sumam says, some things like pravrittim acting properly, cha also, nivrittim not acting improperly. Bhagavad Gita 16.7, latest edition is an obvious mistake. Who decides to not change it immediately? GBC doesn't. Yes, this is the BBT trustees. They're um, responsible for this. If you have what seems to be an error that comes to your attention, you can write to errors in English books at panho.net, errors.english.books at panho.net. It's in your chat box. Um, you can write to, that's the address to write to, to bring it to the attention of the BBT's editors. And the BBT trustees have, of course, the ultimate say over how things are done. Um, that's the only thing I do these days. If I see something that looks like a mistake, I report it to that address. That's any citizen can do that. Any mistake that you see, you can just write to that. Uh, or any question you have, is this a mistake or not, you can send to that address. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like we have come to the end of our hour. Um, also, I almost never find anything in your wonderful CC translations. Well, they're not my translations, they're Prabhupada's translations. I, um, and it's, in fact, it's not even my editing a lot of the time. I edited Adi Leela and Antya Leela. And Hayagriva Prabhu edited the Madhya Leela. Um, as a production, well, as a part of the production line in Los Angeles at the time, I did go over the Madhya Leela, uh, but really very quickly. Um, that was part of our uh, 17 book uh, marathon. So I did look over Hayagriva's work, but uh, zip, 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 not, not in, in great, at great length. Uh, but Adi Leela and Antti Leela, uh, that's where I was involved doing editorial work. But the translations are Prabhupada, the purports are Prabhupada's. We're just um, in the business of polishing. Any book about the 17 book marathon? No, there isn't a book about it, but certainly there could be. That would be a, a, a neat little piece of work. Uh, a good, good subject. The I agree with Prabhu was such a good writer. Yes, he was. He, he's uh, a very good writer. Okay. I haven't been, boom, cutting things off exactly at eight because the, uh, on Thursdays these days, Tuaco is, isn't, isn't doing classes. So I've, I've let us go over a few minutes, but it is time to end. Um, have all the other classes on New Jersey Sangha been discontinued? Okay, um, no, what's happened is that um, Yashoda Dulal Prabhu has been sort of recruiting the, the speakers for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, first, the, they've decided that Saturdays and Sundays need to be a day off. People, there's lots and lots and lots of classes going on on the weekends. And uh, so they've said, well, we don't need to do Saturday and Sunday. The weekday is fair enough. And Yashoda Dulal Prabhu has been recruiting speakers for, for Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
but he's recently changed jobs and he's been quite busy. So he hasn't been able to give attention toward that recruitment. So um, it's sort of sitting with um, Madan Gopal uh, and what he intends to do is uh, get to relaunch Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think next month, starting in February. So again, they'll, they'll uh, resume the, the, um, the Tuesdays and Thursdays classes. Otherwise, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, and that's it for now. But Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think we can start seeing uh, the former program of having wonder, wonderful speakers. Okay. The uh, otherwise, there's so many classes. It's uh, during this these times. There are so many wonderful classes uh, going on, and we can we can take advantage of them. And I, I don't think there's a central directory anywhere, but there's. Uh, although it might be nice. Uh, what classes do you hear regularly? These days, um, I'm listening to Indra Dunamarj's classes on like, he's doing on Vrindavan from Vrindavan. He's been locked down in Vrindavan, so I've been listening to his classes regularly. I've been listening to the Govardhan retreats organized by Burijan Prabhu and Sachi Nandan Maharaj. Um, I wish I were listening to Niranjan Marj's classes and uh, Bibi Govinda Marj's classes. It's just too much. I can't can't keep up. And there's so many other uh, classes uh, going on that I you know, we 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 have um, embarrassed every day. We have so much wealth, but we can't keep up with it all. So um, th there you are. Uh, wonderful, wonderful classes being given by so many wonderful devotees. You know, Kadamu Kanarmaj is giving regular classes. And many, you know, I think everybody practically, well, so many preachers, so many leading devotees are giving classes. And if it's that you'd like to bring to the attention of this, of the devotees here on the Istagosti, then uh, feel free. You know, it's like uh, that's a topic. Istagosti means chosen topics, uh, topics that were of interest. So if you'd like to contribute something like that, uh, let us know what you found. You know, share with us what you found on the internet of uh, classes by devotees that that others here might be interested in, by all means, feel free to share that. All right, we've gone to 810, and I think, Mara. yes. Mara, Mara, the quick Mara, question. They're all quick, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, where are the bona fide uh, Bengali translations of uh, the books that Prabhupada hasn't translated? The Sanskrit, the Sanskrit one, I know, Dutu Paranda Prabhu, Bhanu Swami Maharaj have done Maharaj most, of the, most things, of the things. But from uh, uh, point, point, point of view, the Bengali, Bengali books, books, is there anyone, is there anyone who has anyone actually, translated actually translated them? them? Into English, you mean? Yes. yes. Is there anyone who's translated Bengali books into English? I mean, I find, I mean, so, I many find editions, so many editions, but I don't know which is... Bonafide or well, I don't know either. Um, there, of course, the, neither the BBT nor nor ISKCON has a, any sort of a body that recommends or, or recommends for or against books generally, certifies or or certifies against books that the devotees publish them and. It's, it's up to you to decide what you think. Um, trying to think of who um, and, um, and who's Sar out there. Sarva Bhavana or Sarva Boma, I'm saying. He translates um, a lot. 
Sarvabhavana Prabhu. It's not the best English, but it's still, like you said, the message is. Yeah. Um, I'm really not quite sure what's out there. Um, there's a, a lot of stuff out there, and I'm not quite sure about it. Um, because what's... some of the books that I see on Iskon Desire Tree, they are Bon Maharaj's books. Yeah, so, yeah, so I don't know. But Sanskrit, I know I can go to Bani Swami Maharaj. Yeah. Um, uh, Swami Ban Maharaj, I don't think published very much, mostly his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, of which I think only one volume was published. It, there's not a lot out there from him. Um, Srila Prabhupada wasn't enthusiastic about his work. Um, about the, the, and then there's other things from Gaudiya Math which generally devotees haven't given much attention to because it really the the English has just not been. Uh, I mean, there are some barely books intelligible. Shridhar Maharaj, Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar Maharaj. Oh yes, are they good? I find well, a lot of translations. Um. Srila Sridhar Maharaj hasn't, as far as I know, translated particular works. Um, he hasn't like translated this book or that book, but there have been um, compilations of from his um, his teachings, which in general I find very good. Um, again, I I don't know that I want to sit here and say, well, this one's good, that one's good, that one's not good, this one's sort of good. Um, the, um, yeah, so, and, and a lot of these books I haven't read also, so I can't, can't really say, um, there's a book called Follow the Angels compiled from Srila Sridhar Maharaj's teachings, which I found very good, um, And then there's writings by our God brothers. There's so many books now. There's so many books now. Um, but I, anyway, that becomes another topic. Um, that becomes another topic. Oh, uh, as far as sharing how. Um, um, because you just, said we can share classes that we're hearing that are inspiring. That yeah, yeah, you can just uh, bring them here and 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 tell us about them. Oh, put them in the put them in the chat box and, and okay. so on. Not today because we're going to close off. Yeah. But okay. Uh, my goodness, how is this type kind of so small today? And very important books like Jiva Dharma. Um, yeah. Um, Again, uh, the, there there are books out there that I think are, are are quite good. Some of them may may be done by people that ISKCON has some issue with, um, but they're good books nonetheless. Um, some of them come with um, yeah. Anyway, I think there there are books out there that make substantial contributions. Um, one is best guided by one seniors and one spiritual master about what to read, what not to read. Um, I don't think I want to get deeper into that, but there are books out there that make a substantial contribution. Um, and we, we will end, right? We don't want to go beyond our, too much beyond our hour because then it starts to be that uh, you don't know when you sign on how long we're going to be and when we're going to be. Um, yeah, when you sign on, you should have some idea when you're going to be able to sign off. I, it, it helps to, to know, to, to, to stick to, 
to your standards and your expectations. I don't want to run on and on. And so, good evening. Thank you all very much. Happy chanting. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Hi, Hari. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. How are you doing?